What's up everybody, it's Joe from JLW Games coming at you with another cool video. I'm back and playing a coaster with uh, our park here. And um, last episode we did this layout for this roller coaster and like I said, I pretty much rework the layout a little bit because I tested it and it didn't really work real well. So uh, I guess my designing skills are still slightly off. So what I had to do is make this element here which was kind of a corkscrew into kind of a larger um, element. So I made it kind of like this pretty large um, zero G roll, which it still goes through it pretty quick. It has some nice speed on this ride. A lot more speed than I thought it was going to. And I actually add a lot more than just a overbank turn at uh, after this park or after this part. Um, and I actually uh, decide to add another inversion to keep things uh, moving smooth. So this layout is does end up being kind of a pain and uh, I'm constantly I was constantly changing it to make it better and uh, eventually I do get something that works out really nicely. I still might change it ever or later to make it just a bit more smoother. This uh, next inversion also gave me issues because um, it was too short and the turn was a little bit too quick so I had to turn or change that and I think I actually changed that off screen after this episode but um, for right now uh, it's left here and you'll see it changed in the next episode just a little bit smoother I kind of just make it longer and I had to do a little bit more terrain editing for this element to fit in uh, because it was it just took up a little bit too much space when twisting and turning I should have just made the hill that uh, leads into it a little bit taller but um, oh well it works and uh, you keep nice have a nice speed I also uh, end up getting rid of the mid course brake run because it slowed the ride down just a little bit too much and uh, it was probably kinda unneeded anyways because the ride isn't uh, super super long but uh, I, felt, I felt like it does turn out to be a pretty decent B&M uh, at the end but um, still quite a bit a, of work to go uh, before um, uh, I think it's going to be perfect by any means. So um, it does have a total of five inversions I believe which is a pretty pretty decent number I think for a B&M floorless coaster. I think that works uh, out quite a bit. Um, my screen uh, was just frozen there. I think that I can't remember what happened. <laughs> I actually think I actually had a bathroom break. I couldn't remember. But uh, anyways, I had this kind of like helix type element um, to fill in also uh, because it has so much speed and um, it just adds a little bit more or helps a little bit with the speed uh, part of it uh, going into the dive loop and I uh, had to rework it quite a bit uh, to line it up with that dive loop again and uh, this is it was a very a long tedious uh, process but I wanted to make sure the coaster itself was re uh, realistic uh, enough to be in a park and um, it just a lo lot of uh, errors with this uh, ride probably one of the most I've had so, uh, when ever since I've actually made a realistic type of coaster. So um, I was able to successfully line it up with the dive loop pretty well and uh, the transition was pretty good. I, I was kind of a little nervous about that little sharp turn right there but um, it's fast but it works out, uh, ends up working out pretty quick or pretty pretty quick, I mean pretty well uh, in the end so um, uh, it's still a couple of rough sections that I need to figure out how to smooth out because uh, I do test it when I do test it I do try to figure out where the rough parts are and just kind of try and smooth it in a way um, that uh, makes it smoother if that makes any sense uh, without using the smooth tool sometimes you have to do more than just use the smooth tool to make it smoother so um, yeah we get into the station um, which is a very basic station, nothing too fancy, and um, I noticed that I wasn't going to actually extend that uh, in that direction, but the station itself um, is it does end up being a little bit, or pretty simple, 
uh, when it gets finished. Um, uh, and this is me pretty much getting rid of the break run because it was unneeded, so I decided to make this more of an airtime hill instead. And it fit quite nicely, I thought, and uh, fit it pretty well. And uh, just a little bit more smoothing around the ride to make it better, um, but there's still probably a little bit more work that it does need to have. But overall, it's I think it's a pretty good lay layout. You know, five inversions, which seems to be a pretty uh, you know realistic number for a uh, BNM floorless. Maybe you know, five to seven inversions usually seems to be um, what you go for for these kind of coasters. Um, as for the color scheme, so far it's gonna stay this color, unless you know the uh, I come up with some theme that would force me to change it. Um, it doesn't really have much of a theme at the moment because uh, I don't have a name or anything. But again, this park is going to be more of an amusement park rather than a theme park. So most of the rides aren't going to be heavily themed. I mean, they'll have some theming, but not like super heavily themed like an actual theme theme park. It's going to be more of an amusement park, if that makes sense. So I, I just feel like that's what kind of park this is. Is It's more of an amusement park than anything. And it works quite well. And I do like using the sand texture or just some different texture to kind of mark uh, the area that I'm working on. And it just kind of helps me with the guide and or kind of gu helps guide me with uh, making kind of a more uh, planning wise for uh, sections. So again, this uh, station isn't very, you know, complex or anything. It just has, you know, a flat roof and stuff like that. I didn't want it to be super complex. I wanted it to be pretty simple uh, just for what it is and uh, that's exactly what it ends up being. So you know just kind of this roof w held up by some wooden beams and stuff like that. I was actually <laughs> I was still pretty impressed um, how the transfer track actually turned out. It looks pretty cool. Um, if only I could change the colors which hopefully by next alpha we'll be able to change the colors of uh, different items and stuff. At least that's the way it looks like. Um, just adding a fence. Um, so guests don't... You don't want your guests falling off the edge of your platforms. That wouldn't be very good for your park. So you definitely have to have those fences around. Uh, to make sure that doesn't happen. But of course, I can't wait till ride operators actually get into play as well. Uh, I think it'd be kind of cool if there were some operating panels. And kind of the uh, flat rides as well. You don't see that uh, at the moment in flat rides. Uh, I hope they eventually someday add that as well. Uh, but um, we'll eventually get some operators in these booths, um, which will be nice to have. You know, add a little bit of realism. Those booths are pretty nice, but uh, I wish we could kind of, you know, customize them just a little bit more. Um, you know, put the booth, or uh, it's hard to explain, but be able to customize the booth just a little bit more. As for this queue line, this is going to be a massive queue line, uh, so I decided to make the um, uh, the width just a little bit smaller on the uh, main part of the queue line. Uh, the queue line itself is going to be kind of, I, I wanted to make it kind of realistic to a nice, you know, B&M, like it's going to be a really popular ride, and you know, uh, on busy days, you're going to have to fill all those up. So. That is um, what my thought process is when creating this queue line because it's going to be a very large uh, queue line area and I thought it worked pretty well. It doesn't have a whole lot of theming around it. It's just mostly just queue line but uh, that's, you know, since it's a more of an amusement park and less of a theme, that's just uh, how it ends up being uh, at, at the end. So uh, this little cover here just... Uh, helps cover part of the queue line going up to the station itself and I thought it was just a little bit of a nice touch and I kind of experimented just a little bit um, with this uh, kind of making a fence at the top here slightly with uh, these wooden planks and it worked quite well or actually it worked pretty or quite well and uh, uh, in the end so uh, I did actually end up using it to create uh, more parts of it on the side here, and uh, look at that, it looked pretty good. 
<clears throat> so, um, yeah, this covered area does kind of look interesting, uh, at least I thought, with this fence kind of randomly placed there, but it, it looks kind of unique, and I kind of like it. <clears throat> But this station is very simple. I'll probably need to add some a little bit more details on it uh, later. But for right now, we get the basic shape, and that's the main part, is that we're getting the shape of this ride and stuff. So, <clears throat> we get to that, and I uh, had to make the roof pretty much the same as the other one, so it would match uh, perfectly with that at, as well. So this is going to be kind of a large area for this ride, which is kind of what I was going for to each each coaster. I like to have nice big areas uh, that it serves itself. And as you can see, this queue line is going to resemble a nice long queue line for um, you see the coasters and stuff. You know, it'd be kind of cool. I probably wouldn't be uh, wouldn't actually happen. But if the queue lines, you know, had, like, sections, like, if the queue line's not long, that, um, there's a shorter queue that can be used and stuff like that. Like, they use chains sometimes, which is kind of weird. Or, or not weird, I mean, more realistic. Uh, anyways, I decided to make these little circle square type, um, plaza, kind of like a plaza. Uh, small little plazas around the area, just to serve as a neat little, um, thing. And I've been getting a lot of comments saying I need to rotate my plants more often. Certain plants I don't think it, it's needed, but some of them I can understand. <clears throat> but really, with the low amount of plants that we do have, you know, you you know, they're all gonna look the same anyways. <laughs> but that's just my opinion. But uh, I do end up getting more into the habit of rotating, uh, just like everyone has been requesting. <laughs> so there you guys go. And, of course, you don't want your guests wandering about into the perimeter of your roller coasters. So, it's apparent, or it's definitely required to have fences or gates or something all around uh, when you have a um, pathway going through a ride or something like that. You want to make sure they can't get to it because, you know, you know it's dangerous. <laughs> it's a restricted area, so... But... Uh, the area actually is coming along quite nicely, and I'm very impressed with the, uh, ride itself. Uh, once it all gets finished, the layout will get better over time, <coughs> and I do kind of do work on it just a little bit off-screen after this episode, but, um, yeah, that's that. And, uh, you see all this work on the pathway to get it connected, and, um... There's a lot of plants and foliage that I add around uh, the pathway itself, which is a nice little touch because it looks nice and pretty, and this park looks nice and pretty, and that's that's a good thing, right? You know, and um, but uh, just another little pause. I think I add a I add quite a few of these actually, and they I think they are really nice to have, and um, I. Probably will overdo it in this park. But anyways, that's about it for this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed watching. And make sure you like, comment, and subscribe for more. And I will see you guys in the next one. Have a great day and an even cooler tomorrow. Thanks and goodbye.